Today we are going to sample some chocolate moonshine and have a quick discussion about how it was made. Stay tuned. Hi, thanks for tuning in. Today we are going to sample some chocolate moonshine. Now I made this myself. Uh, for a while now I've kind of had this crazy idea of a chocolate moonshine. But the, the kicker is I do not want to just take moonshine and add chocolate flavor to it. I want to actually ferment and distill a chocolate flavor. So that's been my goal and this is my second attempt at it. My first attempt at it um, whether you see, I don't know if you, whether you've seen it or not, but I'll put a link to it in the top right of your screen. I actually fermented and distilled Yuhu. It actually fermented halfway decent. Um, it was a pretty low ABV all in all, but uh, I got a low um, a low output from it. But it worked. Didn't taste that good, but it worked. This is my second attempt. What I did on this one was I started with a basic corn mash, just a simple corn mash of 20 pounds of corn, 10 pounds of water. I just boiled my water just like I would normally do. I added my corn at the boiling point. I turned off the flame as soon as it started to gel, to gel, to gelatinize on me. And then I just kept working it until it was completely gelatinized. And I let it sit. I let it set and cool to 180 degrees and uh, I had used some high temperature amylase on it to convert that starch into sugars. Then I let it cool some more and at about 160 I used some low temperature amylase to convert those sugars into simple sugars. And once it was done and I was ready to move it to the fermenter I added my cocoa. So, I don't know if I messed up at this point or not. We're going to find out shortly when I sample it. But I used one cup of cocoa to five gallons of mash. And I broke this up into two different mashes. because I, I currently cannot boil ten gallons of water with corn in it at the same time. So, I broke it up into two five-gallon batches. And I added one cup of cocoa to that five-gallon batch. And I did this twice. I started off with a starting gravity of about 1060, which is pretty decent for just corn. For me, it's pretty decent. Other people get higher with just corn, but for me, it turned out that's pretty good. That's about an 85% efficiency, I believe, something like that. But in the end, I ended up with about nine, and, nine gallons of liquid that I put into my still, and I ran it. This is what I got back. So this is about three quarts of hearts. Now I'm a little picky when I when I do my cuts. Um, I tend to cut from the heads to the hearts as soon as it gets sweet and it's no longer slick. You, the, the, the slickness of the head will go away. It'll start smelling sweet and it'll taste sweet. When I get all three of those, I cut over to the hearts. Likewise, when I get into the tails, I cut over pretty early. Um, I don't mix a whole lot of my tails in with my hearts. So we ended up with about three quarts here. This is a one gallon jug. They actually hold about five quarts. Uh, one gallon on these is somewhere right about in here. Um, when you get up to the uh, where it actually says one gallon, yeah, you're up to about five quarts, somewhere in there. But I got three quarts of hearts with no tails in it. But at the end, about the end of the third quart, I started getting the tails he smells. So I switched, I switched my uh, collection jars and started collecting tails at that point. I collected quite a bit of tails. I collected two and a half jars of tails, just kind of hoping that I would get a real good chocolatey aroma coming through there in the tails. And I never did. It just got worse as it went along. So I just turned it off and left it. But this is what we got. This is 128 proof. It is crystal clear. And that is about three quarts. 
So I'm not going to proof this down in the gallon because I don't know yet what water is going to do to that cocoa flavor. If we have a lot of cocoa flavor, but we're going to find out. Because I have uh, taken a small taste of it, but I have not diluted it yet. Look at that. Nice and clear. There's no shadow to that at all. Mm. On the nose, it's corn. Right there on the nose, I mean, you can smell the corn. There's a... Uh, Hmm. You know what? There's a there there is an aroma to it. It could be a it could be cocoa, but I honestly cannot identify it as cocoa. Let's sample it. Yep. It's a little hot on the lips. It's 128 proof. It's a little higher than what you would normally even put liquor into a cask. But right there on the tongue, and on the back of the tongue, you have a real subtle, a real gentle cocoa flavor. Yeah, it doesn't come through real strong. But it is there. It's real subtle, but it's right there on the tongue and on the back of the tongue. But honestly, there's no lingering cocoa. It's mostly corn. I mean, it's, this, this is a corn liquor. That's what I made was a corn liquor and I added cocoa. So it makes sense that it would taste like corn. And that's what it tastes like. It should taste like a corn liquor. Mmm. So the one thing I don't know is how it's going to respond to adding water. But we're going to find out. This is just a uh, little bottle of uh, drinking water from Walmart. This is not what I would normally use to uh, proof my liquor. But here lately I've been uh, bottling my liquor at full proof anyway. I proof it either as I consume it or as I put it into a decanter. That mixed really well. We didn't get any kind of a we didn't get any kind of a haze out of that, which is good. I wasn't sure if we would get a a, a cloudiness out of that or not. On the nose, you can still you still got that corn. That corn's right there on the nose. And any kind of a, any kind of an aroma that would have been something besides corn is unfortunately gone. Yeah, it's just corn. I can't I can't really detect anything on the nose other than corn at this point. On the tongue, hmm. Yeah, on the tongue, the uh, cocoa is almost gone. And that's what I was afraid would happen. I was afraid the cocoa would disappear pretty quick. Mm. But it's a good corn liquor. I will say that. Nice and clear, even after adding the water. Not cloudy. Not cloudy in the, in the least. Like I said, all I collected was hearts. Once I got into the tails, I pretty much stopped collecting. And I didn't use any of the tails that I did collect. Mm. So that's it. Chocolate Moonshine. I have an idea for my third attempt. I am going to do a third attempt. Um, it's going to be a little more complicated of a mash recipe than what I use for this one. It's not going to be just corn. I think I'm going to do a corn base. It'll be, it'll be like a bourbon recipe. It'll be mostly corn, but I have something else I want to add to it. 
I may add the cocoa in addition um, because I did pull some cocoa flavor through here. Um, I think I'll probably add more cocoa rather than just a cup to five gallons. Um, I'm going to at least double it. I don't know. I'm going to at least double it. I might even go with a uh, with a full full can of cocoa. But there will be a third attempt. So I'm going to call it a success because we did get a cocoa flavor through that. But much to what I was afraid of, as soon as you start diluting it, that cocoa goes bye-bye. I really was hoping that the tails would pull some of the uh, cocoa flavor out of there. I was really wanting to see some of the chocolatey notes come through, but mm, really didn't get the chocolatey that I was going for. But the one thing we did prove, cocoa will come through the still. It does not come through real good, but it comes through the still. So that's it. I'll call this a mostly success. I wish it had more of a chocolatey flavor to it. I think my next one might have a little more of a chocolatey flavor to it. But uh, the one thing we did learn from this experiment is that cocoa will come through the still. After distilling the Yoohoo, I was kind of afraid that cocoa itself may not come, may not come through the still because I did get a uh, cocoa flavor in the Yoohoo, but it had a, a really bad aftertaste to it. So. But uh, I think that was something else that was in the Yuhu. It wasn't the cocoa itself. We know that cocoa will come through. It comes through the still, but it is subtle. Um, it's got to be treated gently. And um, when proofing down, it definitely uh, uh, dilutes it. I, I, it wouldn't take much more water than that. I think by the time we got this down to 100 proof, I think the, uh, the cocoa would probably be gone. But it's not a waste. That is three good quarts of corn liquor. That's it. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up down below. It looks something like that. It's just red. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. It helps us in the ratings. My email address is on the top right up here. You can also reach all eight of us at masonjarmafiacrazy8.com. Open up your browser, plug that in, and check us out. There's a link down below. Thank you. You have a good day.